Crime in the streets, what the rich world fears and many slum dwellers know only too well. But what if crime and development are more tangled up than we care to admit? Mushida and Boniface, the motorcycle boys of Corrigocho. They're among the first to own motorcycles on the Nairobi slum they call the Dirt Island. Some say the motorcycle boys own the slum, and they've their own ideas about improving slums. Are they a threat, or do they have anything to teach us? Cameras one of their new recruits. He's a rebel even by motorcycle boy standards. This is their story. Kamaz home Korogocho is Kenya's fourth largest slum. Dirt Island has been home to many Kenyan crime lords. Like Kama, many young men here get involved in crime at some point in their lives. I came to Korogoto when I was 12 years old. I used to steal clothes from the clothesmen in the neighborhood. I wouldn't just wear them. Sometimes I'd wear or sell them. Kamar reckons he was fortunate to move to Korogocho considering his line of work. It was almost as if the slum was designed for crime. Alleys don't have issues, but if you pass on the main road, meet, meet the police and get shot by them. That's why I use the alleys when they steal, because you can hide here. Kama lives in one of the worst areas in Korogocho, Grogon. Grogon is a hotbed of crime because of the abandoned houses that criminals hide out in. There are lots of stories about why you should be very careful walking these streets, even in the daytime. I was attacked by two boys who were standing on the road. They grabbed my shirt and they tore it. I tried fighting them off, but one of them stabbed me in my back. The other one hit me in his fists. They stabbed me and took care of me. Quite frequent. We can get like two or three. It depends, but hardly you miss a case. Most of them will fall. They are actually very severe to treat here. Much crime here is spontaneous. With many places to hide in and run away to, it's tempting to seize opportunities when they arise. You can drop somewhere no one should go to the cops because they are afraid. We never planned to use this. Sometimes maybe three of us just idling. We decide to grab a suspect, keep on track them, and put them in the next one. We never planned to use this. Sometimes maybe three of us just idling. We decide to grab a suspect, keep on track them, and put them in the next one. We never planned to use this. Sometimes maybe three of us just idling. We decide to grab a suspect, keep on track them, and put them in the next one. Kama's ambition was too big for Korogocho. It may seem designed for crime, but there's too little to steal. So Kama searched for wealthier targets in central Nairobi. There are many people in town, man. You can look closely at someone and see that they have money. I can tell from the way they hold their bags. You can see someone walking on the road holding their bags tightly. Always looking over their shoulder. I'm very observant. This town is ours. Kama started 
working in Westlands, a posh suburb of Nairobi. This was after joining the Mungiki, a notorious vigilante group. He'd made serious profits by extorting money from minibus owners. So I joined the Mungiki. 37 of us were initiated into it at that time in Westlands. We started working on those streets. We would harass the people, especially the minibus drivers on those routes. Ask us to ban one minibus and then wait for about a week. When we go ask the driver for money the next week, you think he won't give you? He'll give you. These guys were my good friends. We worked together. We used to help each other out. Yeah. They all died. <laughs> I thought about my life and said, no. the way people are dying, I can't die without leaving something behind. I met a girl named Shiko, and we had a baby girl. And I was Bridget, yeah? What made me and Shiko split up? Well, I cheated on her. So that's the main reason that we disagreed with Shiko. Mushina also saw most of his friends die on the streets before he became the original motorcycle boy. He had an idea which might be frowned on in conventional development economics. A friend of mine told me he had a plan. We would make a lot of money from me. We went to another supermarket. Okay, he's going up to 250,000. The idea? Profits of crime plowed into a legitimate business in the slums. With the money, I bought a bike and set up at the stage. We are only two motorbikes. Then we increased the force. At first, people were uncomfortable with riding motorcycles. But after, we became many. They got used to it. Mushina and his crew of motorcycle boys now provide much-needed taxi services within Korodoko. From four motorcycle boys in the beginning, they've grown to 40, including the Kama. I never planned to be a motorcycle boy. When I heard that the cops were hunting for me and counting my bullets, I decided to stop going to Westlands for a while. I hung out at the motorcycle stage for almost a week. Most of these guys are in front of me. He they will never have money. It's going to be a big issue. Kamath didn't use his crime money from Westlands as wisely as Mashina did. His love for gambling is not help. Unable to afford his own bike, he now works for a fellow motorcycle boy who takes a cut from his daily earnings. He takes up my money because I have to take care of the bike when it's mine. The bike gets little problems that cost 100 to 200 shillings to fix. I can't tell the owner about those little problems, so I get to fix somewhere and just pay. I think I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little bit I'd have spent that money better, but I didn't. Like now. You know I used to get 200 or 300,000 shillings before. If I got just 100,000 shillings now, people would be amazed at how I'd invest You see, a bike is amazing. It's a lot of fun. When I have a bike, I really have a lot of fun when I'm on the bike alone. 
Boniface, one of the two original motorcycle boys, feels that crime profits have led to a lot of improvements in Coracocho, more than most people would care to admit. Here in Korogosho, you find that someone has set up a business, but actual is part of employment. After stealing outside, people come back and invest in businesses here. You can't just sit around idly, just relaxed. You look suspicious. The business that people work here are the illegal ones that cause harm. Kamad doesn't make the profits he used to make from full-time crime, but what he makes from the bikes is just enough. For example, sometimes business is good and they can make a profit of about 1,000 shillings. That takes care of all my expenses. Most of the money is spent to myself with it. When she grows, I pray that she reads her and that she agrees to study hard in school. I would hate to hear that when Bridget is older, after growing up here, that she's been raped in this area, I wouldn't want to hear that. Those things happen a lot in a place like Korokocha. It would be my joy if she lives here and is growing up, that Korokocha is also changing at the same time. Every day, Mushina walks his kids to school in the nearby Dandora estate before going to work at the biker stage. He too feels that the motorcycle boys have made a difference in Korogocho. This of bike for us are also a form of upgrading. Because Damn. before, people could not walk here at night. People were being robbed a lot. But now that the bikes are carrying people, they are now safe. But the bikes are not as safe for everyone as Machina would like to believe them. Many accidents happen in Korogocho because of speeding by some of the thrill-seeking motorcycle boys. Accident now for Barabara, of course. Accidents on the roads are unavoidable. Because the road what is very congested, especially in the region. And right now, now, the road doesn't have much space for pedestrians to pass. Pedestrian. A new road has just been built in Korogocho. It's the first slum upgrading project here. It circles all the way around the slum, hence the name Dead Island. Machina feels that overall the new road is helping Korogocho. We never had a tarmac road in Korogocho. Other businesses would have continued to ignore, but the bikes would not have succeeded in the new road. So before, when the motorbikes used to get the cost, they would get spoiled very quickly. The motorcycle club may have some issues, like speeding, but they've managed to win over certain important people. Many of us guys don't have licenses, so the police used to disturb us a lot. So we had to go and speak to the chief, also the one who came back. And we told them we are just young people. And instead of returning to crime, we would like to just do this work and gradually we get licenses. Driving license. The motorcycle club is doing pretty well, according to Machina. But for Kama, who doesn't own his own bike yet, life is still a bit tricky. Right now, I'm 50-50. There's no need to lie. I usually think, should I leave this? Should I continue? It's hard to rely on money from this bike sometimes. Especially having a wife. When you have a wife, there's always a need that arises that requires a lot of money. For instance, you may need about 5,000 shillings to sort out an emergency, and that's my responsibility. So that means I'll need to go to Westlands, 
or to steal to get the money. Kama's still not sure about the motorcycle club, and he's not alone. Khadija is a member of the Korogocho Urban Upgrading Committee. She feels that building a youth centre will be a more constructive solution to crime. The youth centre is about linking the talents that the youth have in Korogocho with business and then also there will be a maybe mentoring process from the, the, from the centre which will be acting as a coordination point. Maybe they can be dragged away from the crime or the, the changa they take. Motorcycle boy Mashina is not just a motorcycle boy. He's involved in slum upgrading with Khadija and supports the youth center idea. Jana. When the youth don't have a place, it's set aside for them to meet. It's not good. But when they get to meet up and talk, I think they'll do a lot. They'll help each other and they'll grow. But Boniface feels that crime is about one thing only, and that the solution to it is very simple. Life is difficult. You don't grow up with money. So, when you find a means of getting money, help you has a money. big influence on you. Getting in money is so very important here in the ghetto, get even money especially for the ghetto. So Boniface believes in supporting businesses like the Motorcycle Club and others that have followed in its wake. The idea of opening a car wash was to help create security. The idea of operating a car wash was for security purposes and also to generate income for the youth. This young group started the car wash after seeing all the motorcycles in their neighborhood. When business was low, we would still wash at least eight bikes. We would all end up getting enough money for ourselves. But the car wash was short-lived. They didn't have the motorcycle club's luck. The water was shut off after people complained about their homes flooding. So no, we had dug a trench here. See, it never affected anyone's home. The trench was here, but it's now been covered with stones. I think it was just people looking down at us as the youth. It's a community thing. Many girls were the car wash, and they had kids, and were relying on this money. Now we're just idle. So we just got to the news. Motorcycle clubs, car washes, it's not what most people would think of as the best way to improve slums. They're breaking the rules and the law, and not just their the jobs. Like slum dwellers the world over, Kama helps himself to energy. I pulled this wire. I pulled it like this. Can you see where it's coming from? Can you see where it's going? So it comes in here directly. Now, by the time they come here, how long do you think it will take me to remove these wires? Before who comes? You see them on the road when they come in. Which guys? The Kenya Power Company. I'll just disconnect the wiring and push the wires into the house and draw these other cables to the back. Then I'll reconnect everything after they leave. There are other wires that are connected to the ground, but you can't see them. They're hidden. Now, if you look at the power lines in this area, can you see any proper lines going to anyone's home here? For instance, my neighbor can ask me to connect his power, and I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. Then he'll give me some cash. Then I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. Then he'll give me some cash. Then I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. Then he'll give me some cash. Then I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. Then he'll give me some cash. Then I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. Then he'll give me some cash. Then I'll just pull out some wires for him and connect him. If I need electricity, isn't there so much of it over here? As the motorcycle boys do things their own way, slum life is changing across Nairobi. There are plans to upgrade slums and build more new roads and houses. And that's sparked a debate here. Best to help individuals with businesses like the motorcycles or invest in infrastructure and building new houses. Coach is not this house. These houses do not represent Korogosho. Korogosho is the people who are living here. 
so you can play people and can be made aware what is good and what, what is, is good or bad. bad. That you is upgrading that can actually help people. people. Like see. Infrastructure is more important because uh, Everyone in the community benefits from that. But if you look at individuals, it's very important to look maybe to, to help the, or support individuals. But how many can you support? There are new homes being built in the nearby Kibera slum. And now Korogocho, the dirt island, could well be next. But new housing projects don't always change people. Even if they build here, even if they build good houses, this will always be a ghetto. Someone like me lives here, and they'll build, and I'll rent those houses. Even if I become wealthy, I will not move to middle class suburbs like Nuruburu. If it's possible, I'll move down there, down to the most fair place in Korogoto, and live there. We also have ghettos in uptown places like Westland's area. On one side, we have the rich people's houses. On the other side, we have cheap houses made out of iron sheets. Even if they build proper houses here, I know what Korogoto is. But for Mushina, a new Korogocho is a real possibility. It's what he feels they're all working towards. Somewhere. In a new Korogocho, what we need are new buildings that are durable. We need good roads too. So that we can have a safe estate with no deaths or anything like that. So, the new Korokocho is reforms in our areas. Not drug abuses, not drug abuses, not drug abuses, good houses, security. And people having titles to show ownership of plots. The new Korokocho is a plot. Maybe in three years to come, we want to have a complete safe Korogocho, at least 90% safe Korogocho. But maybe what the youth uh, with the motorcycle have done, it's maybe like 10%. Yeah. We want to reach at least 90%, if not 100. And we are looking at diverse activities because not everyone can ride moto motorcycle or motorbikes. Not everyone can ride bikes, but the motorcycle club has been successful in attracting and reforming some criminals. Boniface feels that it's important to include all rule breakers, criminals and potential criminals in the Dirt Island's future. If the youth are not involved uh, in the, the youth are not upgrading, involved in process, in the upgrading process, it, it won't happen, happen because, because these are the people who are thieves. thieves. And they are the ones who can destroy the things here. The thin. Administration is strong. The administration is not strong. With the guns, yeah. guns, Zico. Millions of people live in slums like these across the world. Improving their lives is one of the Millennium Development Goals, one that often seems just out of reach. Do we need to listen more closely to the people we're trying to help? They should have come and asked us our opinion on construction reforms. They put big bumps on that road that are too big for motorcycles. They are bumps made for cars. The youth have tried to become independent, so they should support bikes more. We started this as the youth. In the future, we will leave it to the bikes to carry towers. Kamat is not waiting on the future, though. He's making his own rules, which may not be anybody else's. But he's got the energy, if anybody wants it. If you ask a child what they hope for in the future, you'll find anyone who'll tell you that you want to be poor. If I have my own bike, uh, well, you don't see me in Westlands. Yeah, well, uh, I find me to steal. Mm. I can't just sit still. 
Elders need to be busy doing something.